Oh, day is coming in great day, and it won't be very long. When all the saints are gonna gather, we're gonna gather around God's throne. Then we're gonna feast on the milk and honey. We're gonna sing and never get tired. Oh, day is coming a great day when the Lord returns to his bride. Oh, day is coming a great day, and it won't be very long. When all the saints are gonna gather, we're gonna gather around God's throne. Then we're gonna feast on the milk and honey. We're gonna sing and never get tired. Oh, there is coming a great day when the Lord returns to his bride. Well, I know not the day, nor do I know the hour when the Son of Man will return with all his glory and power. It may be in the morning, it may be night or noon. But I can tell just by looking at the signs of time that his coming will be very soon. Oh, day is coming a great day, and it won't be very long. When all the saints are gonna gather, we're gonna gather around God's throne. Then we're gonna feast on the milk and honey. We're gonna sing and never get tired. Oh, day is coming a great day when the Lord returned to his bride. Well, I had a lot of pain and sorrow. I had a lot of troubles and trial, but just one glimpse of this pearly gate is gonna make it all worth the while. Sometimes I cry in the midnight hour, my body all wrecked with pain. But just one look at my Savior's face is gonna wipe every tear away. Oh, day is coming a great day, and it won't be very long. When all the saints are gonna gather, we're gonna gather around God's throne. Then we're gonna feast on the milk and honey. We're gonna sing and never get tired. Oh, there is coming a great day when the Lord returns to his bride. Well, I know not the day, nor do I know the hour when the Son of Man will return with all his glory and power. It may be in the morning, it may be night and noon, but I can tell just by looking at the signs of time, his coming will be very soon. Oh, day is coming a great day, and it won't be very long. When all the saints are gonna gather, we're gonna gather around God's throne. Yes, we're gonna feast on the milk and honey. We're gonna sing and never get tired. Oh, day is coming a great day when the Lord returns to his bride. Amen. You may be seated. We are so grateful once again. <clears throat> He's the Lord God that is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We want to thank him. You know, the, the Bible says when, when he comes, Will you see faith upon this earth? Uh, I thank the Lord that, uh, you know, as we look at the world, we can see that uh, faith is something that is far from people. And the gospel is something that many people don't want to hear about. But I thank God that uh, he's placed a desire in our heart. And he's, he's placed, you know, a hunger in our soul for the living word of God because... For us, it is the only thing that satisfies and brings comfort and peace to our soul. Though many times the enemy will try to take the very breath out of our, you know, the, the little breath that we have in us. But I thank God for his sustaining word. I thank him for his grace that sees us over all life brings to us. I give him all the glory, honor, and praise from where he has brought us. And, from where, and where we are today and where we are going to. I am so grateful to the Lord and I want to give him all the praise, honor, and glory. And I want to thank him. I know every one of you here yeah, go through some, because, you know, like our brother said, uh, without the armor of God, you cannot withstand the enemy. And we've got to daily put on that armor of God and stand against all the wiles of the enemy. I thank God for what he has given us. Uh, it, is what that, it is what he has given us that helps us withstand the enemy. 
And uh, for that, I just want to praise him that he can talk to us at all times of our life, whether it's in the midnight, whether it's in your trials, whether whatever your situations of life may be. You know, there are times where you meet a crossroad and you don't know which way to go and what decision to make. But you know, when you call upon the Lord, he's ever ready to give us an answer. And many times that answer also may not look right, but in the eyes of the Lord, he's molding and shaping us. He's guiding and directing us. And for that, I just want to thank him this morning and give him all glory. Amen. I wonder if my sister Sharon can come. Brother Ashley, you can get ready next. Sister Samantha, got a song. Greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus. Christ is my reward in all of my devotion. Now there's nothing in this world that could ever satisfy through every trial. My soul will sing, no turning back. I've been set free. Christ is enough for me. Christ is enough for me. Everything I need is in you. Everything I need. Christ, my all in all. The joy of my salvation. Now there's nothing in this world. That could ever satisfy Through every storm My soul will sing Jesus is Lord To God be the glory Christ is enough for me Christ is enough for me. Everything I need is in you. Everything I need, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back I have decided to follow Jesus No turning back No turning back The cross before me The world behind me No turning back no turning back The cross before me The world behind me No turning back No turning back I have decided To follow Jesus No turning back no turning back I have decided to follow Jesus No turning back No turning back Christ is enough for me Christ is enough for me everything I need is in you 
I greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus. I'd like to thank God that I could be found here today. Um, I'm not feeling too well. Um, I wonder if the church could sing that song, Lord, without you, I'm nothing at all.
Greetings, brothers and sisters, in the powerful name of Jesus. Thank God for his healing virtues over my life as well. I wasn't feeling too well, but I praise God that I'm feeling much better today. Well, I've been a soldier in God's mighty army since many long years ago. And I've been scarred and wounded in battle, and many times I've been brought low. But by the signs of the times, I've realized I have one more mile to go. And when he sets the lights of heaven above, I feel like running my last mile home. Oh yes, I feel like running my last mile home. I see a great band of angels around God's throne. Oh, what a great celebration. While ages roll on, I feel like running my last mile home. While Jesus said, when he reached down to save me, I'll go with you all the way. So I stand on his precious promises that he filled me both night and day. a taste of what lies just ahead I feel like running my last mile home oh yes I feel like running my last mile home I see a great band of angels around God's throne oh what a great celebration while ages roll on, I feel like running my last mile home. Oh yes, I feel like running my last mile home. I see a great band of angels around God's throne. Oh, what a great celebration. While ages roll on, I feel like running my last mile home. Grateful for all those songs. Shall we stand? <laughs> the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies will never come to an end. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies will Never come to an end. They are new every morning, so new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. As we gather, may your spirit walk within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name. Knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship, 
worship will be blessed because we came will be blessed because we came the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases his mercies will never come to an end they are new every morning so new every morning great is thy faithfulness O oh Lord, great is thy faithfulness. Amen. Over to my brother Deva. Amen. I want to greet you all in the lovely name of Jesus Christ. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are so grateful this morning. That we can gather in your divine presence, Lord. You're the God that has watched over our lives, Lord. You've guided us, you've helped us through this week, my God. I pray for every soul that has gathered here this day, my God. You see the hearts, Lord. You see the many situations of life, dear God. Lord, we know without you we can do nothing, my God. We are thankful that we have a throne of grace, my God, whereby we can come, Lord, through the precious blood of Jesus Christ, and we can lay our petitions at thine altar, my God, knowing, Lord, that you're a compassionate God, Lord, that answers all our cries, Lord. I pray for your precious word, my God. Lord, inspire our thoughts this morning, my God. Lord, for a few moments, Lord, take our minds Lord, and rest it in heavenly places, dear God. Guide these lips of clay, my God, that something can be said, Lord, that will formulate a picture, my God, of the day and time we live in, my God. We come at this service now in your hands. We ask these mercies now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen. You can be seated this morning, my brothers and sisters. We want to thank the Lord to give us another opportunity gather together we're going to go to our first slide uh, and uh, we're going to turn in the book of Daniel this morning chapter 12 we have a message here this morning recognizing time and the order of his coming now my brothers and sisters uh, we are living at an hour of time where the world at large, brothers and sisters, uh, yes, the religious world, uh, if you have to put on any television or on your Facebook or whatever, brothers and sisters, uh, every one of them, uh, no doubt, uh, because of what is going on in the world, uh, they are saying that Jesus is coming, is drawing close. Now, my brothers and sisters, as much as uh, they say that, but they just say it, uh, I would say, from a certain angle. And uh, we want to this morning uh, try and go in the Word of God and try and paint a picture. Not uh, to be able to just, uh, just say Jesus is coming, but to be able to look at the Scriptures why we are living at such a precise uh, hour of time. That is why we have the first part there as recognizing time. I'm sure most of you, uh, when you went to school, especially in primary school, the first uh, few uh, weeks uh, in school, uh, whenever the teacher wanted to teach on time, my brothers and sisters, uh, you know, they normally drew a, a circle or did something. Uh, I don't know how they do it in the modern times. But brothers and sisters, uh, you know, our minds were very curious to know what that second needle was, uh, what uh, you know the hour needle was and what uh, brothers and sisters the minutes needle was and it took a little bit of time but finally as time went along uh, we we felt great about the fact that we could read the clock we could uh, read the time and uh, you know we we went back home and uh, we began to look at the clock and uh, say what time it is uh, yes initially you made many mistakes 
And uh, remember also in the scriptures, it's the same way. God, brothers and sisters, wants us to know the time. He wants us to recognize the time. And my brothers and sisters, uh, you're not going to be able uh, to put that picture together unless you also scripturally know what the minute needle is all about, what uh, the hour needle is all about, and, and what the second needle is all about. And my brothers and sisters, so I pray and hope that uh, we can uh, be able to put some scriptures together. I'm not going to spend too much of time and detail on all of the scriptures uh, because it will take a long time to cover many things. Uh, but uh, we have to understand. I remember the first time, uh, it was many years ago, brothers and sisters, uh, some 30 odd years when I bought my first car. It was a Ford car, it was 300 rands. My brothers and sisters, but I had to get it in charge. And so when I, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, wanted it in charge, uh, the insurance agent asked me, what type of policy do you want? Do you want a comprehensive policy? Or you want a third party co policy? I didn't know what it really meant at that time. Uh, but my brothers and sisters, I asked ourselves this morning, what do we want out of the word of God? Do we want a comprehensive look at the Word of God? Or we just want, brothers and sisters, uh, a third party policy, somebody knocks a car, well, they, they pay for the damages. But, brothers and sisters, I believe our God is not in a third party policy. Our God is in a comprehensive policy, if I would say, because He's got enough written in His Word. And we are living at a very, very late hour of time. And my brothers and sisters, sir, this week, the Pope, as well as uh, the people from Quetta, and uh, the Imam, the great Grand Imam, brothers and sisters, sometimes in February we preached a message about what happened in Dubai. Brothers and sisters, they now have signed the document to now implement that human fraternity document. And uh, I'm not going to go in detail in that, but it is uh, to unify uh, humanity in a common way. So that brothers and sisters, whenever the Pope, that's what's in his mind, they don't know about that. When he wants to get everything done, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, that document is already there. And I wondered why they got, uh, you know, Quata, Dubai involved. Brothers and sisters, uh, go and see what are the richest nations of the world. And my brothers, they either fall second or third uh, in that Middle Eastern area. Brothers and sisters, all the rich businessmen go there because, uh, brothers and sisters, that is where, brothers and sisters, the monies uh, or businesses uh, start to uh, terminate from. But the Pope, uh, no doubt the devil behind the Pope is very clever to get the right people in. Uh, so I just wanted to say that but also, brothers and sisters, uh, last night uh, or yesterday, brothers and sisters, Iran had put a plan together. Brothers and sisters, and they wanted to send into Israel kamikaze drones. We heard about kamikaze in the time of Pearl Harbor. My brothers and sisters, but now they wanted to send uh, these death destructive drones uh, into Israel. And Israel had learned of the plan, and my brothers, before they could do it, brothers and sisters, they alerted the world, and they devastated whatever plan they had. I can only see God's end in it. Because my brothers and sisters, only God can alert them and tell them of such a plan that is, brothers, connivingly, connivingly put together. And I thank God that my brothers and sisters, as we see these events, we have to realize we are living uh, just not in any time. We're living at a precise time in the scriptures. So as we turn there in the book of Daniel chapter 12. It says, and at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble. And my brothers and sisters, uh, I wanted to see the word at that time. 
at that time. Brothers and sisters, that lets us know in order to recognize time, living alone in every other place in the scriptures, we have to find uh, a basis to start off. And my brothers and sisters, we know that that time of trouble that's going to end off in, I would say, the Daniel 70th week, brothers and sisters, uh, there has to be an introduction to that. And uh, if for whatever reason, Iran uh, had done what she did, wanted to do yesterday, we'd have already entered into a major time of trouble. Because they're not uh, now carrying planes, they're carrying drones, uh, the brothers and sisters with the explosives to be able to just explode over the cities. So brothers and sisters, we have to realize at that time, it's the time that we are now living in. Brothers and sisters, the well, world uh, is reaching a point of trouble. It's an introduction into that great time of trouble. As I said, I'm not going to spend too much of time uh, because it will take a long time to explain that. And it says, uh, Michael shall stand up the great prince which stand up for the children of Israel and there shall be a time of trouble. We know that leads into uh, the era of the miraculous. Such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time and it, and it will, I would say the end of that time will be uh, in uh, the great tribulation. And it says, uh, and at that time thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. That is when Israel with the two prophets brothers, will receive uh, a message uh, so that they can be spiritually delivered. And it says, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Now my brothers and sisters, Daniel at that time, he wrote, but he did not know, uh, I would say, the sequence of events. But he wrote about a resurrection. And my brothers and sisters, we know, as children of God, when all of these things uh, climaxes, as the rapture will be taking place, brothers and sisters, uh, at that time there is going to be a resurrection uh, of the dead. All the saints, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, that died, uh, I would say, through the seven church ages, that I would say would be the bright saints, uh, they're going to rise up. And my brothers and sisters, uh, that is where that scripture is going to be fulfilled. But the other aspect, uh, some to everlasting life and some to everlasting contempt, in that scripture, brothers and sisters, uh, there's a great expanse of time, uh, because uh, them that are going to rise uh, Brothers and sisters, to be judged, uh, that will be uh, after the millennium at the white throne judgment. Yes. So brothers and sisters, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn uh, many to righteousness as the stars forever. That's talking about you and I. Brothers and sisters, uh, we are not uh, shining lights in this world. We are shining uh, not brothers and sisters in our own self. It took the grace of God. Brothers and sisters, to give us whatever understanding we have. And I want to say at this time, whatever picture that God places in our mind, brothers and sisters, uh, outside the grace of God, there is nothing to boast about. Brothers and sisters, He is the one that can take uh, the faintest mind and uh, in a second paint a picture in it that gives a joy to that soul. So brothers and sisters, it is not so much... Uh, which university you went through to, uh, but whether the Holy Spirit is in you uh, to be able to take the Word of God uh, and paint a picture inside your mind. So, uh, they that be wise, uh, it is not uh, their natural wisdom, but it's what the Holy Ghost uh, will make them wise. They shall shine, uh, brothers, when the world is getting darker and darker, and they shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Brothers and sisters, there's no other hour of time that God wants His people to shine in the Word of God. To be scripturally, I would say, uh, clear about the time that they're living in. Because if you don't know the time you're living in, uh, you will coast in this life. You'll say, well, I'll just go to church on Sunday. The preacher will preach something. I will take the high points. I'll go home. But what effect is that having to you? Brothers and sisters, so it's important uh, that the wisdom and the understanding of God comes to our mind. 
And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Brothers and sisters, uh, whatever God opens to us, we have to have a desire to have another child of God. Not to boast with what God has given us. Brothers and sisters, but to be able to show another child why this is a late hour that we are living in. So, but then the word of God says, But thou, Daniel, shut up the words, seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. We talked about this in a few services past. But I bring this in, that that book was sealed. Brothers and sisters, God did not send an angel and tie the book up and say, Daniel, well, what you've written now, it's going to be tied up. The understanding of what was given was to be remain sealed. In other words, it will not be opened till the time of the end. And my brothers and sisters, there's no one, even the religious world today, you put on every station, uh, we're living in the end time, we're living in the end time, this is the end time. But brothers and sisters, how come they did not receive what Brother Branham said? How come they ditched what he said? So how will they know? Not just by the signs, that's one of it. But brothers and sisters, uh, that which was written in those days uh, that was sealed, was to be unveiled in the time we are living in. Now, brothers and sisters, some 600 years or later, God sent an apostle on the scene. And my brothers and sisters, uh, the apostles were given, I would say, fresh food uh, for their day and their time. Because many people were dying uh, in Paul's time. And they were questioning him and saying, Paul, uh, we, we were expecting the coming of Christ, but, but many saints uh, are passing away. And maybe that's the same way we look at it. Lord, I uh, became a Christian. I thought uh, Jesus would come, uh, but we are still carrying on in this life. But brothers and sisters, remember this. God has seen each one of us. And the clarity of the word of God uh, is going to become more and more clear as the days go by. And we're not going to wait, brothers and sisters, just when Jesus is going to come to say now, Hallelujah, I see the picture. Brothers and sisters, uh, it's now that God is wanting us uh, to begin to see a picture so that it would uh, enthuse our lives, stimulate our lives, and make us uh, want to live for Jesus Christ. So brothers and sisters, uh, Paul said, I would not have you to be ignorant. And my brother, sir, if in that hour, Paul said, I don't want you to be ignorant. You tell today, today, they will say, I'll take you to the lawyers. Don't tell me I'm ignorant. Brothers and sisters, that's not our purpose. That's not what we're trying to say. But Paul is trying uh, to prick them and say, don't be ignorant about the hour that you're living in. Because, brothers, if somebody is walking towards the cliff, you, you're going to say something to the individual to make the person not walk on. So Paul says, be not ignorant concerning them which are asleep. That ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Brothers and sisters, we have to have a living hope in our soul. Whether we are alive or whether we die, we have to believe that through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, we have a hope. That's what Paul was saying. For if we believe that Jesus died and arose again, even so them also would sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, Sir Paul is not saying, this I say to you by what I learned under Gamaliel. He says, this I say unto you by the revelation that God gave to me by the word of the Lord. It was not contained in the Old Testament. They could search there, but they had no answer. What are going to be those pivoted signs uh, before Jesus come? And he says, this I say to you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain. Now my brothers and sisters, Paul is dead. Brother Branham is late. 
Brother Jackson is late. So where do we shift the scripture? When it says that we, which are alive. Brothers, we are the people that are alive. And remain, and we're going to remain till the rapture. So this scripture from Paul's hour moves to our time. Because brothers and sisters, they're all in the grave. They're waiting for this event. But the Bible says, we which are alive and remain. So it's on our shoulders that I would say, uh, this scripture is lying. So that we can be able to somewhat put it together in our mind. Unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. Brothers and sisters ask the religious world today. They say yes Jesus is coming. But then they'll tell you he can come uh, for the church collectively, before the church service is over, or maybe a hundred years, who even knows, it may be uh, a thousand years. They, brothers and sisters, they don't have a time in their mind. Brothers and sisters, that is a misconstrued idea of the word of God. The word of God says uh, that Jesus will descend uh, from heaven with a shout. Brothers and sisters, how many religious people today? How many of our relatives? If you have to ask them, uh, brother, what is that shout? They, they, if they knew it, they could answer you the question. But brothers and sisters, because uh, it took the shout to awaken us to scriptural reality. That is why, brothers and sisters, uh, that shout, uh, its intention was uh, to make us recognize time so that we can be able to see how we're moving forward. But brothers and sisters, the religious world, they, don't, they are past that. They don't even know what the voice of the archangel would be like. And with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. I said I'm not going to spend too much of time with the details of it. But we know that we have heard a shout in our time. And my brothers and sisters, it awoke us to the scriptures and to the hour that we're living in. And my brothers and sisters, uh, in front of us, we know one of these days in Revelation chapter 10, an angel is going to touch ground, which is going to be, brothers and sisters, characterizing uh, Jesus Christ. That's the voice of the archangel that's in front of us. And my brothers, when that is over, we know, brothers and sisters, uh, the dead will hear a voice to awaken them. And we which are alive and remain will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. So that scripture is no more a mystery. Brothers and sisters, we know, I would say, even in what small ways you know it, brothers and sisters, uh, what it really means uh, to a certain extent. That shout, its intention was to open 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 16. To be able to bring fresh word to the bride of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, the religious world are living still on the carrion of yesterday. Brothers and sisters, but that shout was to be able to show us what is in the word of God. So that brothers and sisters, we can be able to have a desire. How many times, brothers and sisters... Whether it be at home and everything, sometimes there's, there's a lot of food in the fridge. But you know, uh, you just want to know what the wife is cooking now. You just want to know what is being made now. Brothers and sisters, it can be just uh, even a fried egg, but you just want to know because there's something fresh. And God's intention is the same way that brothers and sisters, He will bring to the bride of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, in this generation, and the first thing was he sent a messenger with a shout. And my brothers and sisters, a carcass was brought to the bride of Jesus Christ. And then it says, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And even so shall we ever be with the Lord. Brothers, what a bright future is for the bride of Jesus Christ. 
what scriptures have been documented uh, that is uh, right to this time when it says we which are alive and remain but look at the world today brothers and sisters what has it done to the society we were just talking uh, before service uh, how brothers and sisters uh, they want the children now even the babies as soon as they're born uh, brothers right from zero to put things in their brain why they want them uh, brothers and sisters to be fast in the class uh, Gadias marks uh, brothers uh, to become scientists to be to go to the moon but none of them are talking about uh, whether they can have eternal life whether they will rise from the dead brothers and sisters that's fine if that's in the curriculum but what about the gospel of Christ Amen. brothers and sisters in in my days in school there st was still a prayer in the assembly there was still Bible studies uh, in a small way being taught but in this generation my brothers the human mind has been devoid of the Word of God and that is why today brothers this well brother this is it's just it's for you it's 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 mysterious to us but we're gonna be partaking we're gonna be caught up in the air but we're gonna be prepared to be caught up if we're not prepared we we're not gonna go up so the Bible says brothers and sisters then we which are alive and remain again that's you and I Paul said in that hour Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Brothers and sisters, Paul said in that hour, this is what should bring some comfort to the saints that may be going through many turbulent situations. But don't worry, there's a plan of God in operation. But brothers and sisters, so Paul, he goes further because what he said made the people get very excited and they were expecting Christ to come any time now so they had to write another epistle to somewhat calm them down and then give them some sequence of events so brothers and sisters so we see recognizing time and the sequence of events or the order of events now we beseech you brethren by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us at the day of Christ is the day in other words I wrote a first letter and I see some of you I've got very excited but uh, remember uh, he's not gonna come next minute so Paul begins to open the picture with his next letter and my brothers and sisters that is why we have to see that in this time God's done the same thing to us and my brothers and sisters he said let no man deceive you by any means <clears throat> for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and the man of sin revealed I talked about this last week that falling away brothers and sisters let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come unless it is preceded by a rebellion or open rebellion and the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition now my brothers Paul wrote that in that day he never talked about Dubai he never talked brothers and sisters about uh, a document uh, of human uh, fraternity, uh, fraternity but time had to go by whereby we come into this lot of time where there is an anti-God spirit in the world nobody wants anybody talking about God and my brothers and sisters uh, this man of sin uh, brothers that will come on the scene but there will be a paving of the way brothers and sisters so the rich nations are being pulled in so brothers and sisters uh, all of this can be paved in so that one of these days when that Ezekiel 38 and 39 war takes place uh, he can easily sign the covenant so brothers though Paul wrote that at that time he gave one predominant sign which was there'll be an anti-god spirit in the world 
it will be difficult for you to stand maybe sometimes amongst your own cousins and family. Say, well, let's bow our heads for prayer and eat our food. Brothers and sisters, uh, sometimes that you'll have to push forces aside. Or let's bow our knees and let's pray. Or let's, let's read the word of God. Let's read a psalm. That's the spirit that is in the well. And so, brothers and sisters, Paul knew that time will come. And my brothers and sisters, so Paul was trying to say, look here, that day is not going to come unless this happens. But brothers and sisters, I want you to see from the time of Daniel to the time of Paul, they didn't even know there was going to be seven church ages. They didn't know so much of time will transpire. Brothers and sisters, Paul, he passed away. And John on the Isle of Patmos came on the scene. God was going to give him a book that the Gentile churches are going to carry. And brothers and sisters, what would be the purpose of all those church, churches uh, or church ages carrying that book and then bring it to the end time and we who are the last generation and we are who are carrying that book. It's mystified to our mind. We are the ones that the unveiling of the book has to come to. So brothers and sisters, uh, we have to see, I don't say the responsibility, but we have to see, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, how it is the baton is now in our hands to be able to recognize the time and to be able to see uh, the order of events. You, you can't even go to Paul and say, Paul, give me the details now. Give me the comprehensive uh, picture of it. Because brothers is in the ground. He was given enough for his time that will be carried to our time. To those that are alive and remain. Now my brothers and sisters, sir, we'll turn there in Luke chapter 12 and verses 32. The Lord Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, is speaking these words. Well, many times as we look at the scriptures, there are some things that are written in the book of Matthew, some things are written in Mark, some things are written in Luke, some things in John. And well, you say, well, you know, I'll, I'll just go for the book of Matthew because he was the man who was on ground that wrote all of those things in chronological order. But brothers and sisters, when we think in this time, that brothers and sisters, God sent a messenger, and he talked, brothers and sisters, sir, uh, in the book of Malachi, I will send you Elijah the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, sir, uh, if you just read Malachi, Without being able to read in Luke 117 when the angel quoted that scripture, that angel stopped brothers and sisters quoting uh, Malachi in full. It said, brothers and sisters, he shall go in the power and the spirit of Elias uh, to turn the hearts uh, of the fathers to the children and my brothers and sisters and the wisdom, uh, the, the wisdom to the just and he never went any further with that scripture. That is why when Brother Branham, or Brother Jackson rather, was sitting in his lounge and he was reading in Luke, and my brothers and sisters, sir, uh, and he saw that the angel only quoted one portion of the scripture, then he realized there was another portion there to be the fulfillment. And the man that was on ground at that time, uh, Brother Branham, he said, uh, of what he has seen, then that is the man that will fulfill the second part of that scripture. Now imagine if Luke, just like a parrot, brothers just took Malachi 4, 5, and 6 and, and wrote the whole thing. Brothers and sisters, uh, he would have not given us anything to go by and say, well, you know, that first part was for John the Baptist and the second part was for the messenger of this hour. 
Brothers and sisters, will you say, well, that's just one scripture. Well, brothers and sisters, when Jesus Christ came, you know, when he took the scroll, and my brothers and sisters, he opened uh, to Isaiah 61. Brothers and sisters, he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and all the rest. And my brothers and sisters, uh, he said, this is the acceptable day of the Lord. Following that is, and the day of vengeance, he stopped. He never talked about the day of vengeance. Because his coming was uh, just the acceptable day of the Lord. When God writes his scripture, it's precise. And uh, also when God interprets his scripture, it's precise. He'll stop just to the part that is for your day. So brothers and sisters, uh, we can give many more uh, examples, but that should be sufficient enough to say why we are reading uh, from Luke this morning here concerning what we are talking about. It says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Brothers and sisters, we know that this is talking about spiritual treasure. And my brothers and sisters, if our minds are just on tradition and the carnality of this world, then we'll only be interested to go to church when the service. Other than that, our minds are on other things. But if we have a spiritual treasure in our soul, the Holy Spirit has unraveled His word. Then my brothers and sisters, uh, you can be uh, at home, you can be on your lounge or your car. Brothers, that Spirit of God can, can pull out a scripture. I read it this morning, but Lord, what, what is the full meaning of that? And it will stir you up. Uh, you won't be satisfied still. You go and do some research or something. Because uh, you want a calming in your heart. And God knows how to do that. So the Bible says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be gathered about and your lights sh burning. Brothers, this is a scripture for the end time. And the word of God says, let your loins be gathered about. Brothers and sisters, sir, when it says, let your loins be gathered about. In other words, sir, that is a man who is in preparation. And in this hour, we know God sent a, I would say, garment of refined fine linen to the bride of Jesus Christ. God wants us to be garmented with that fine linen. And so, brothers and sisters, your lights, your lights burning. Brothers and sisters, uh, I would have to say, what really fuels your lights? Brothers and sisters, it's the Bible says... Uh, that thy word is a lamp unto my pathway. The unfolding of your word. Bring it forth light. Brothers and sisters. So uh, it is what's in the word of God that produces the garment. But also. Brothers and sisters. If you do not feed that oil brothers and sisters. Or fire with logs. The fire will go out. The same with our life. If you don't pray, if you don't read the word of God, or if you do not add to what God has given, add true virgin scriptural truth, the fires will start going out. So Jesus is saying at this hour of time, where your treasure is, there will your hearts be. And you sell and let your loins be girded about in your lights burning. Brothers and sisters, if we were left in the denominational systems, brothers and sisters, going to church would become a tradition. Our lights would have gone out a long time ago. But it says, and you yourself like unto men that wait for the Lord when he will return from the wedding. Now my brothers and sisters, if I read that to the religious well, let's say, brother, that's why we go to church uh, so many times a week, uh, because we, we, are ex we are waiting for the law, that he will return from the wedding. But brothers and sisters, if I had to tell them, uh, sister, brother, but the Lord has returned from the wedding. Say, so, no, Jesus has not come. True. Jesus has not come physically to take us in the rapture. 
But brothers and sisters, uh, the Holy Spirit has come uh, from that wedding preparation uh, to give us something. That is what the shout was all about. The Lord shall descend with a shout. Brothers, uh, that Spirit of God returned uh, to sh tell us, uh, brothers, where we are in time. So when the Word of God says we must wait for the Lord uh, when He shall return from the wedding, people are still waiting. I would say and that wait is either for the rapture or for the visible coming of Christ after the great tribulation. But the bride of Jesus Christ, because she is preparing, she is waiting for information uh, from that wedding preparation. Uh, how close is it? Uh, how much longer? Because their hearts have been set on fire. And that is why, brothers and sisters, in bygone days, this scripture could be read and it could be read over. Just like the scripture that was given by Paul, that the Lord shall descend uh, with a shout. And the world has passed it and, and, and they say, well, we don't know what the shout is all about. But my brothers and sisters, and you yourself, like unto men that wait for the Lord, when he will return from the wedding. Brothers and sisters, this is not returning uh, for the rapture. This is not returning. Brothers and sisters, uh, I would say when he's going to come uh, uh, for the millennium, it's how the Spirit of God, by the Holy Spirit, returns to inform a people on earth. But how will he inform the people on earth? He has to have a vessel on earth. That when he cometh and knocketh, that they may open unto him immediately. In other words, brothers and sisters, when God knocks at your heart, you cannot be saying, Lord, not now. Lord, I'm too busy. You know, I give the reference to what the Jews did. Brothers and sisters, when Jesus gave the parable and the invitation, one said, I bought an oak of oxen. Another said, uh, I married a wife. Another said this. Brothers, that was very crude examples. But in this hour, when you approach individuals, uh, sometimes you can, they don't tell you that, but you can see, uh, brother, another time. Another time. It's not time. But brothers and sisters, uh, the Holy Spirit has been returning and informing a people, and He's had uh, instruments of earth that have been informing individuals. It says that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Brothers and sisters, that means, Lord, you do not tell him, Lord, I have all these other excuses to give. You know, brothers and sisters, when Herod called the religious people of that hour, said, tell us, when the three wise men came, where will Jesus be born? Brothers, the, the wise men knew where he was going to be born. They quoted Micah. They, they said, Herod, uh, he will be born in Bethlehem. They knew. But Jesus was already born some 18 months ago. Brothers, uh, and they didn't know it. So if in that hour they knew the scripture, but they could not see it had already happened. Then why in this hour when you tell people that the Lord is going to descend with a shout, well, yes, He will come with a shout in their mind, whether it's a trumpet or, or something. But the shout already came. And then when we read the scripture that it says He will return from the wedding, well, yes, brother, we're waiting, you know, our bridegroom is going to come and we the bride. But, brother, sir, the Holy Ghost has returned with a fresh word for the people on ground to make them ready for His coming. And my brothers and sisters, when he says when he shall return, he had to have an instrument on scene. Brothers and sisters, when World War II shook this world, no brothers and sisters, nobody wanted to go to the Baptist church uh, or pull uh, a sixth grade individual and say, well, you're going to be the instrument uh, that is, is going to inform the world uh, what, has happened, what is happening in that wedding preparation. But brothers and sisters, God had a man. He was not interested in fame. He was not interested in what the church would have to say. He was not interested in what the doctors of divinity had to say. 
But that didn't mean that my brothers and sisters uh, he had an easy way. Brothers and sisters, you know the story. Brothers, uh, what he was tried with. But before he can tell the bride of Christ what is happening in that wedding preparation, he had to be introduced to the world. God had to have something to be eye-catching to the world. That's why God gave him a gift, brothers and sisters, that outshined, I would say, all people of the Reformation and down through the ages of time. Christ, brothers and sisters, was going to demonstrate that gift of healing in a stupendous way. But brothers and sisters, that was to fulfill a parable. That at midnight, there was going to be a cry made. Brothers and sisters, the world, the, this man, you, you go and Google all you want to, brothers and sisters. Unless you Google something in the message, the line of things, you'll find. But in these religious places that got apps and all of this, which app, brothers and sisters, in the religious world has got a Brother Branham app beside the people of this hour of time? Brothers and sisters, they don't have, they don't want this man. But brothers and sisters, how wonderful those books came. Some brothers, we didn't know this man. It wasn't so colorful the first time it came out. It was more plain. But now, brothers and sisters, those books are out there in public. But remember, the Bible says that there had to be a man in a certain time span. And to some of you, these are the spoken word books, or the messages of Brother Branham. I know maybe some of the younger upcoming generation may. Brothers and sisters, uh, we lived in this and we slept in it and we woke up with it. Uh, that was uh, our food at that hour of time when it first came our way. Brothers and sisters, so God used this man instrumentally. But when he first came, he was to bring an introductory message. Because following on that, God was going to bring the bride of Jesus Christ into the time slot that she's living in. Because she has to know, she has to recognize time. She has to recognize that this man is the messenger of the seventh church age, not a, another generation of time. They have to come to that knowledge. And my brothers and sisters, uh, but initially he did not, I would say, talk too much about time and, and all of those things. My brothers, but slowly... God began to push him to go into the seven church ages. That's the thick book that Lee Vale put together. But my brothers and sisters, he was instrumentally in putting the history, I would say, together so that we can understand we are living in this Laodicean church age. But then my brothers and sisters, that flying eagle was to go a little deeper, a little further. Because brothers, it has to bring information of what's happening uh, in that wedding preparation and when he shall return from the wedding brothers and sisters we realize he brought those messages initially and then he preached the church ages then finally brothers and sisters God let him go and break the first six seals that were in the sixth chapter of Revelation why because God was going to be able to unravel where we are in time. And my brothers and sisters, we have to understand, though this man came on the scene and brought all of that, look at the world today. Look at the confusion that is in all of the places. Some of them are more confused, brothers and sisters, than before. A lot of them that came and they heard that, that shout, they became so tired and weary. They, brothers and sisters, some of them gone into businesses. Some of them have gone into other things. Yes, they will, they will love you when you talk to them about Brother Branham and all of those wonderful experiences. But they don't want to know anything further than that because they couldn't see in the scriptures what is written. Brothers and sisters, Matthew 25 was written, And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. Brothers and sisters, uh, you have to connect that scripture. When was it? 
When did they go to buy wind in the religious world? Go to buy oil in our time. That was uh, in the 60s when the charismatic movement came on the scene. They went to buy oil. The Bible says the bridegroom came. My brothers and sisters, either you want to write the scripture off or you have to have an understanding how did the bridegroom come? The bridegroom came uh, with an understanding. Brothers and sisters, uh, we have to believe. When that book, seals were open, God in heaven was breaking the seals on earth. He had a man. And my brothers and sisters, uh, the Holy Spirit uh, came uh, with a carcass to feed the bride of Jesus Christ. That is why it says the bridegroom came and they that were ready. How, brothers and sisters, they were ready in the sense they had uh, received uh, salvation. Uh, they received the Holy Spirit and they were ready for fresh food that was going to come on the table. They were ready, went in. They went into the carcass of the word with him to the marriage. Brothers, we're still here on earth. We are the one that remain and are alive. But we went into an aspect of the word of God. That is going to bring us more clarity of recognizing time. So brothers and sisters, and the door was shut. It was not shut to the bride of Jesus Christ. It was shut to the religious brothers and sisters. You want to go and take this divine revelated truth uh, to, I would say, the charismatic world. Uh, unless brothers and sisters, one of them are caught up there, they can come forward. But they cannot see the picture that God has given us. And that doesn't make you and I anything better. It's just the grace of God that has looked upon your heart and, and saw your furtherance that you want to go. And he led you into the carcass of his word. And the door of revelation is shut to the rest of the world. Now continuing with Luke. He will return from the wedding. The Bible says, blessed are those servants whom the, whom the Lord when he cometh. See. When he cometh, how many times have we seen that reference? The bridegroom came. When he cometh, shall find watching. Brothers and sisters, again, that is not initially to the reference of the rapture as such. But as God is going to be able to bring fresh food for the people to tell them where they're living in time. Verily I say unto you that he shall get himself and make them to sit down to meet. And will come forth and serve them. My brothers and sisters. Returning from the wedding. Brothers and sisters. Uh, is something that we have to realize. That my brothers and sisters. Jesus Christ did not come on earth physically. And sit down. And brothers feed us fresh meat. But when Brother Branham came on the scene, which was fulfilling that first part of what we're going to read, brothers and sisters, sir, we have to realize how wonderful it was when the Holy Spirit took the word of God. Brothers and sisters, some of us seated here today may not have been initially, I would say, when the message first came. But nonetheless, you have at least something to go back with. But it says, sir, he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet. Brothers, how some of the older people sat with the candles burning, whatever they were. Brothers and sisters, they had already come through salvation. Brothers and sisters, I received the Lord in 1961. I knew what it is uh, concerning the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, I knew what the Holy Ghost was all about. But in 69... When a spoken word came in my hand, uh, that just wasn't, brothers and sisters, uh, something about uh, salvation as such. Though many of the things talked about salvation. But we started to feed on some things uh, that we would call meat at that hour of time. So brothers and sisters, he sat down to meet. And will come forth and serve them. Brothers and sisters, Brother Branham had done his job following on his heels God had another man and God 
no matter the man was how far away from us, he was going to allow him to produce a contender in which I would say the word of God is going to be printed out. I gave my testimony how it came to me. Because God saw there was still anger for more. God saw that there was a desire. We had read every spoken word book and listened to every message and all the tapes. And we said that we, we, it was a wonderful time. It was the shout that was to lift us up. But brothers and sisters, everything was not fully explained in that. My brothers and sisters, I have to say I realize time is running out. God sent a man, was an apostle, for 40 years, he allowed him to be on this world to feed the bride of Jesus Christ. And somehow, brothers and sisters, uh, you have to see it in the scriptures. My brothers and sisters, Brother Jackson in 93 came on the scene. He was the one instrumentally to bring about, I would say, the understanding of the two days. But brothers and sisters, he brought a calculation. And we know, brothers and sisters, that calculation did not happen according, brothers and sisters, to what it was stated in that calculation. That, brothers and sisters, all of these events which should transpire by that time. And Daniel 78th week should start. But brothers and sisters, what he spoke was going to happen in that two days uh, of time and the events uh, to the ending of that. Brothers, is still reality and still truth. Amen. But brothers and sisters, uh, God no doubt uh, caused the bride of Jesus Christ uh, to tutor them for the hour that we're now living in. If that calculation didn't work out, uh, it did not need to make the bride of Jesus Christ get scared now. Well, brother, we're not going to look at anything else concerning uh, time or recognizing time or anything else because we're too fearful. We may make a mistake and, and, and we, we're just scared, you know. Brothers and sisters, God gave the bride of Jesus Christ uh, that situation to train them. So that the, this time they would not be a fearful people to tell the bride. Because God will give that information to make things more clearer for the bride of Christ. Amen. So though he was, is not here today. Brothers and sisters. He no doubt laid a pattern of events. Amen. Brothers and sisters in front of us. We know there is to be a miraculous war. There's to be a temple built. There's going to be Ezekiel 38 and 39. There's going to be that seven seals should be to open. So we know the sequence of events by God's grace. That's a clarity to children of God living at this hour of time. They should be able to know, well, no, a temple is not going to be built first. Uh, brothers and sisters, there's going to be a war. That Muhammad Abbas is not going to give the temple ground at all unless he fights for it. So there has to be a war. And I will have to say, if, if Israel did not, what happened last night, there could have been an escalation of this thing. Because no Israeli Jew is going to allow drone kamikazes to come over the cities. Brothers and sisters, but this is in front of us. My brothers and sisters, and it's a beautiful hour that these things are in front because brothers and sisters, we don't have to go by all what the religious world says. Well, this has happened there and that's happened there. I'll have to tell them, brother, miracle war didn't take place yet. The temple is not yet built. Uh, brother Ezekiel 38 and 39 hasn't transpired. There is an anointing coming from heaven for that seventh seal. So brothers and sisters, uh, we cannot be just playing with isolated scripture. There's a comprehensive understanding of the word of God. Not just a third party insurance policy that God wants his people to have. Then in Luke, he helps us understand to those individuals that felt, Oh Lord, we thought when Brother Branham came that Lord, uh, it was the end of it. Brothers and sisters, Jesus says, if he shall come in the... In, come in the second watch or you come in the third watch you should find them so 
Blessed are those servants. Brothers and sisters, Jesus gave a furtherance of understanding. The less you just say, well, I'm sticking with Malachi 4.5. When you go further in the scriptures, let your lights be burning. In other words, that Holy Spirit will bring information in the first watch. Brothers and sisters concerning the coming of Christ, Brother Branham did that. My brothers and sisters, we have to realize in 948, brothers, as that man went and the bridegroom came, a carcass was brought. But brothers and sisters, it was not going to all end under that first watch. Because my brothers and sisters, as that first watch passes by, brothers and sisters, and brother Branham went off the scene, God had another man on the scene to bring fresh information concerning the coming of Jesus Christ. Brothers, the information that came by brother Branham as the six seals were open showed us we're living in the Laodicean church age. When Brother Jackson came on the scene, uh, it showed us, brothers and sisters, uh, that there's a two days and, and events to transpire before, brothers and sisters, uh, I would say the rapture to take place. My brothers and sisters, we're now living in the third watch where, brothers and sisters, the ministry would be bringing information to alert the bride of Jesus Christ concerning brothers and sisters uh, I would say uh, the coming of Jesus that is why under the third watch I would have to say brother Jackson my brothers and sisters uh, spoke concerning the two days but the calculation uh, brothers and sisters did not transpire in 2005 uh, the way it was written because he knew in the third watch God will have some men in the ministry who will take that and will use it as a stepping stone and will say uh, that two days uh, is actually what the seven church ages is all about. And my brothers and sisters will bring to them and say, no, not the, the minute or the hour, but will give them a timepiece to work with so that they can say, brethren, we're now living in this final decade of time as we watch the scriptures. Because brothers and sisters, it's under the third watch that God will clar clarify and clear all these calculations and misunderstandings and errors. Because remember brothers and sisters, whatever God gives from now till the seventh seal open, brothers and sisters uh, will not be the clearest thing as yet. Because when that seven thunders utters in voices, they're going to bring information coming concerning the coming of Jesus. And it's all going to be under that third watch. That's why it's written here in such clarity that my brothers and sisters, it says if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch, they should find them. Blessed are those servants. Because my brothers... If you're talking about the second watch and the third watch, there had to be a first watch, and we know that was under Brother Branham's ministry. Brothers and sisters, so if you want to be blessed, you have to be watching scriptural truth that is coming in your time. My brothers and sisters, uh, I cannot take Brother Jackson's calculation uh, and say, well, you know, he, Brother Jackson said that, so brothers and sisters, somehow uh, it happened and finished off in 2004. And then we'll say... The events have not transpired as yet. But when we look at the church ages and we look at the time span, we know, brothers and sisters, there's about a decade of time in which, brothers and sisters, uh, all of these events can be fulfilled. So that lets me know, brothers, those servants are being blessed by the Lord so that they can have an understanding not to give them a day or a month or a year. Brothers and sisters, when the seven thunders come on the scene, God will bring even more clarity for the bride of Christ. Amen. But up to this minute, we have to understand, we have to understand the information concerning the coming of Christ will be broken in three watches to give the bride information so she can prepare as the Holy Ghost comes from that wedding preparation to give more information to the bride of Jesus Christ. That is why, brothers and sisters, under this third watch, 
we can understand. Imagine when that miracle war takes place. Brothers and sisters, and the temple is being built. And my brothers and sisters, uh, I would say Iran can come with all a uh, kamikaze. I would say Michael will be standing there, brothers and sisters. He'll say, this is, uh, these are toys to me. Amen. Brothers and sisters, because he's waiting Amen. for the fulfillment of the scriptures. So I have to say, God has, has brought a clarity to all mine. But brothers and sisters, Jesus gave a warning and said this no. That if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched. Brothers, not watched blankly. He would have watched the information that was coming on ground and preparing himself. He would have watched and not uh, the good man of the house had known what watch the thief would have come. He would have watched and not suffered his house to be broken. Brothers and sisters, this is not telling that that man is going to go to hell. No. It's saying, if you don't watch, then my brothers, the enemy is going to shake your house. It doesn't mean that, brothers, you're going to be lost. But if you know scripturally where you are in time and recognizing time, you won't allow the devil to, I would say, break your house down spiritually. This is the other scripture that's found in Matthew. But know this. That if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would have not suffered his house to be broken up. Brothers and sisters, so it's important for us to understand that there was a shout. It is important for us to understand the bridegroom came and how he came. It's for us to understand this, I would say, coming of the Lord. Information bringing to us is going to happen under three watches. And God is going to have men in those times to bring information to us. That will clear our mind and make us recognize where we are living in time. And because... These terminologies seem to be, well, uh, Brother Jackson didn't talk about it. Brother Branham didn't talk about it. Brothers and sisters, you have to understand the time we're living in. The Holy Spirit, when it's coming from that wedding preparation, the scenes are changing. And my brothers and sisters, so, under this third watch, there are some watchmen. They're watching. They are seeing brothers and sisters in the spirit world. I would have to say. Things that God is bringing to the bride of Jesus Christ. And my brothers and sisters. Because of that. It's important for us to recognize the time. Because Paul himself said redeem the time. Why did he say redeem the time? Because when you come to understand. Where you are living in. Brothers and sisters, look at what is in the world today. You've got individuals that have come through the message. They know nothing about Ezekiel 38 and 39. They know nothing about the miraculous why. And again I say, just because we know that, that doesn't make us anything. It's the grace of God. But brothers, they don't have to be there. They can come in. But brothers, 40 years, God gave them a chance under the second watch uh, to know information. Uh, and brothers, they, they shelved it. And then my brothers, those that have come under, I would say, Brother Jackson's uh, ministry. Brothers and sisters, when God is unraveling more truth, they say, well, we don't know about that, brother. Brothers and sisters, it's time for us to understand we also were in school, brothers, and, and, and when we saw a clock, we asked our mother, what's the time, mommy? Because we couldn't read what the time was. But after you had spent a little time in your preschool, you were happy to come home and say, mommy, I can tell you what the time is. And my brothers, how joyous the mother was that the child could at least maybe mistake the second, but at least tell the hour. Brothers and sisters, it's a joyous thing for us to say. Well, Jesus is not coming just because, brothers and sisters, uh, there's a scripture said that he can come at any time. 
Brothers and sisters, we know for a surety, unless he comes for us as an individual, he's not going to come today till those events transpire. And my brothers and sisters, we are not in heaven, but the Holy Spirit will bring information. Because in that carcass, there will be ministers, there will be end time servants. The brothers and sisters are dishing out their portion for your day and your time. That is why, brothers and sisters, today, you got the world. But brother, well, you know, uh, aren't you preparing for that, that, and, and that? Brothers, that doesn't mean you don't prepare for your natural life and the things for your children. But, look at the religious world. Brothers and sisters, they are building churches. Brothers and sisters, well, you know, we, the population is going to expand and we need more welfare organizations. We need this, we need that. Brothers, they got a program, brothers and sisters, that goes beyond the century. It let's me know, brothers, all that God gave Daniel... God gave the Lord Jesus Christ. God gave Paul. God gave John on the Isle of Patmos. It's a close picture. But brothers and sisters, to the bride of Jesus Christ, it will be a living truth for this time and this hour. Because brothers and sisters, we all must have went to sleep last night and went, we didn't know what Iran was conniving. Brothers and sisters, what a dirty thing it is to send uh, Kamikaze, brothers and sisters, drones, cowardly, to drop bombs while, brothers, a nation is at, in mourning, brothers and sisters. But that is how Satan is. That is why we have to say, brothers and sisters, the events that are here was to make us recognize time and events. And my brothers and sisters, it all doesn't come in a day. It comes Lord, by saying, Lord, I want to know the time we're living in. I want to walk in your ways. And my brothers and sisters, the Bible says, make no provision for this flesh. If we make provisions, the flesh will make you go to sleep. Brothers and sisters, uh, in your mind, all it'll give you is a box of ice cream or a cone or brothers and sisters, something. And there's nothing wrong with those things. But Satan and your mind knows how to put you asleep. Close the Bible. We'll think about it next Sunday when Brother Deva comes to preach. Brothers and sisters, remember a shout was made to awaken a people. The rest gone to sleep, brothers and sisters. Sir. But remember, we're living in the third watch. There's blessed servants that will bring truth so that, brothers and sisters, sir, the lights can be burning. For this hour of time, uh, and it will be fresh manner for our day and our time. That is what the word of God says. And I'm thankful to God, brothers, that I at least have some people to preach to. Because brothers and sisters, the world at large, if you have to preach these things, say, so brothers, next Sunday we, we have another preacher here. Brothers and sisters, because they don't want fresh meat. Brothers and sisters, tell me a old lullaby story and I'll be happy about it. But I'm thankful, brothers and sisters, for what's contained in the scripture. I'm thankful for what is in front of us. My brothers and sisters, there's an expectancy. And whatever comes our way, God has got it in control. You may not know, Satan may come with surprises, but he's got all in control. That you trust him before the foundation of the world. He saw every setback. And brothers and sisters, you have to have confidence in the God you serve. Without an understanding, there's no picture. Without a picture, there's no confidence. Brothers and sisters, if you sat in that school in the first six months, and when the teacher was teaching you about time, and you was worried about when uh, the school is going to end, you would never have learned what the second hand was about, what the hour hand was about, and what, brothers and sisters, uh, the minute hand was all about. But if you paid a little bit of attention, something would have gone in, and we have the Holy Spirit in our life. And brothers, today, you can just, just look, and, and your mind will tell you what time it is, because there's an understanding. And it's the same way in the Word of God. We're going to stand to our feet today.
Heavenly Father, Lord, as we stand at this hour of time, precious God, Lord, you see the time we live in. Lord, help us, Lord, as we journey on in this life. Take our hearts and take our minds, Lord. Take these words, Lord, that have been spoken. Lord, I pray that you make an understanding picture in the hearts of your people. Only you are able to do that, dear God. Lord, I pray bless your children, both far and wide. Wherever they can be, Lord, guide them along this pathway of life. Lord, as we journey on, my God, I pray inspire this picture. Lord, make it brighter in the souls of your people. And let them know, Lord, there's something exciting, Lord, coming down the road. We ask these mercies in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. You have a need to come forward while we sing a song. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you, dear God. Lord, that our brother has passed a milestone, Lord. Lord, we thank you, dear God, that you blessed his life. Lord, that he can be 60 today, Lord. Lord, I pray that you'll bless him in the years ahead. Guide him, help him, lead him along this way, Lord. Lord, I pray. For this is the evening time It's later than you think The bride is preparing now For the Lord to meet All things are ready now the combine are yet he that at the year to year the evening time is near oh the sail the evening time It's later than you think The bride is preparing now For the Lord to meet All things are ready Combine I yeah. the, at the year to year the evening time is near. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. On the everlasting arm What a blessedness What a peace is mine Leaning on the everlasting arm I'm leaning, leaning Say and secure far more Yes, I'm leaning on the everlasting arm. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim's way. Leaning on the everlasting arm. Oh, how bright the path 
grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arm. I'm leaning, yes, I'm leaning. Oh, I'm safe and secure from all alarm. Leaning, leaning, yes, I'm leaning. On the everlasting arm What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arm I am blessed peace With my Lord so near Leaning on the everlasting arm I'm leaning Yes, I'm leaning, oh, I'm safe and secure from all alarm. Leaning, leaning, yes, I'm leaning on the everlasting arm. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting Sing, um, I a blessed peace with my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting.